Yo, 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 yo. Be back another week, another episode of BYB the Podcast. I'm your host, Regular Ja. Oh, shit, my phone fell. I go by the name of 80 Proof. (laughs) 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 All this technology, I think I have a phone stand, right? (laughs) And we got a a special guest here this week. Uh, Y'all know him. Y'all seen him before. One of the original hosts. Um, And we will have other guests popping in and out as the show goes on. Um, So, yeah. So, don't be alarmed. We're all Negroes. Mm Mm-hmm. Nothing but melanin all up in here. All the melanin. <laughs> Big all facts. melanin. All melanin. All of it. Are you all right over there, man? You good? You good, Kyle? Nah, man. The phone, the phone fuck with me. I'm going to get it together, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see me struggling, right? You see me yeah, struggling? I see you struggling, bro. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, this week has been crazy, man. It's been a lot of, lot of, lot of news. It's been about, a heavy week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been a lot of news about statues. <laughs> a lot of... A lot of information about statues this week. People are mad about statues. Hey, we're going to start there. I need to, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, you're good, go ahead. Sending prayers out to my homie Chris Green. He was the one who got hit in oh, Portsmouth man. by that oh, statue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayers to prayers. that brother. Um, yeah, I, know, okay. I happen to know him, his wife, his sister, so I know him all. So. Oh, you know him personally? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 person. yeah. Even if I didn't know him, prayers to that brother. That, that was, uh, I, I actually watched that live. So, yeah, I seen when that happened. That was, uh, Pretty tragic. I hope he uh, recovers fully. But yeah, TT um, and Leslie, if y'all see this, we praying for y'all, man. Yeah, definitely praying for y'all. That's a fact. Praise yeah, up. people. People are mad about statues this week, man. People are mad about Confederate statues. statues. You know what I'm saying? They ain't mad about what the shits were standing for. None of that though. But you know, it's it's all good, I guess. <laughs> nah, they, they, they don't give a fuck about that. Remember, it's heritage, not hate. You know what I'm saying? They love saying that dumb ass shit. Well, um, we, well, we hate that heritage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fuck that heritage was hate, bitch. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, you know, they're not really looking at the uh, the real history behind those statues. Number one, nah. the majority of those things went up from uh, nineteen. It was like nineteen twenty to the nineteen sixties, right at the height of the civil rights movement, right during the, the height of Jim Crow, is when a lot of them shits went up. And they weren't they weren't up to be memorialized. They were up to let black people know y'all niggas ain't welcome. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what that shit was. Yeah, exactly. That's why the majority of them that went up were like that. And if you see a lot of them, they were mass produced such at a quick rate and they were just finding any artists to slap them together. A lot of them look like shit. They're like, they're not even good from an artistic standpoint. They look like shit. They're shitty statues. They look rushed. Like they just push them shits out. Like if you really look them up, they look fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, you know, a lot of people are really upset about that. They say you can't change history, or we're just trying to know. Nigga, we ain't trying to change history. I just don't feel like my child or or anyone else of of color or should have to go to a park that's named after someone that wanted them to be enslaved, or yeah. a school that's named after someone that was fighting to keep them enslaved. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and by fighting well, a, a literal war, like they literally yeah. had a war. <laughs> Yeah, 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 a little reward. Uh-huh. Like, they literally uh, killed each other for this shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit over, over trying to keep black people enslaved, right? Yeah, wow. and they was like, oh, yeah, that's because the North, uh, nigga, the North ain't give a fuck about black people. What it, what it was was the white people in the North that couldn't get jobs to, to fucking support their families was like, yo, this slave labor is fucking us up. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, yeah, let's that's, that's keep that narrative. That's less yeah. not think that the North was fighting for an honorable reason. I'm sure there no. were some people who thought slavery was evil, but let's not get it twisted yeah. and say the Union Lincoln. was fighting purely because they cared about our, you know what I'm saying? Lincoln really only freed the slaves because he knew it would weaken the South against them. They wouldn't have as many people to fight for. Yeah. If you free the slaves, you lose, you lose warriors in the South. Mm-hmm. So it, it really wasn't about us. Yeah, but along that narrative, we got to be careful because a lot of these uh, people who support that nonsense, they try to do that revisionist history where they're like, oh, the the Civil War wasn't fought over slavery. It was fought over states' rights. I'm like, yeah. There's, there's yeah, right their rights to keep slaves. slaves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they right. get the right to keep slaves. Do you not understand? This is the right to keep slaves. Like, where the fuck is your head at? It's the right to keep slaves. And uh, so, and even, and even if you look at the... Uh, the um, what is that? Man, you already right over there, bro. 
This nigga, nigga dies product, every man. episode. This, this is what happens at least once an episode. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and even if we look at the succession papers, the uh, you know the Declaration of Succession, when they were leaving the Union, every Southern mm-hmm. state, they all ex- explicitly said, "We believe thoroughly in the institution of slavery, and that the Negro is not equal to the white man." Yeah. This is in their succession papers. So I don't want to hear none of that shit about states' rights, and this is the reason why. That's bullshit. Yeah, one quarter yeah. of a one quarter of a human being is what they uh classified us as. Exactly. But so, yeah, Lincoln even said, if I could save the union without freeing any slaves, I would do it. And if I, I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. So the shit was never about this letting the fucking slaves go. Ever. It was about the union, the saving the fucking union. Yeah, from, from Lincoln's standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, from Lincoln's standpoint, it wasn't about being honorable, and I don't I think slavery is an evil institution, but from the South standpoint, it was purely about, we want to keep these slaves because these niggas is picking our cotton on the house and we're not trying to pay nobody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I really got into a debate with a guy over Robert E. Lee, because you know they try to remove the Robert E. Lee statue in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. They're going to. So he really took it, uh, like two sentences from a letter that Robert Lee wrote after the war was over, after he had already lost, and tried to make it seem like he was against slavery. Nigga, he had like 170 slaves on two different yeah. plantations. He Man. was he was the lead general or whatever you want to call him in the war. You Robert can't tell e. me that man wasn't. Robert E. Okay. Lee wasn't against no motherfucking slavery. That's the whole goddamn no. lie. Now, what he was against, in his own words, in his own words, he was against these Confederate memorials, he was against that shit. He didn't want, after the war was over and they had lost, he said it would do more damage by putting up these memorials and it would carry on that, you know what I'm saying? The, the, mm-hmm. the feelings and emotions by putting up these memorials. He didn't want no monuments and shit to himself. He didn't want it. He said, no, don't do that. He said, take them fucking, the uniforms, the flags, throw that shit in your attic. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, that's, that shit is done. Like he was, he didn't want that shit to be celebrated because they lost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, why the fuck lost. would you want just? Why would you want you you losing to be celebrated? You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing. We're yeah, celebrating basically. losers. We're celebrating traitors. We're celebrating treason. You know what I'm saying? And you, these motherfuckers that claim they patriots, they love America, all, all this. You know what I'm saying? Jazz or whatever. If you do, then why are you celebrating traitors? That would be like going to Poland and seeing statues of Adolf Hitler. You know what I'm saying? After he invaded Poland. Like, come on, that shit don't make no fucking sense. And then getting mad after they told the shit when they started tearing them down and shit. Exactly. Come on, man. We the only we the only country that's got shit like that. There's no other country that's got monuments to the people that that are traitors and trees. There's no other country that's doing that shit. Yeah. Then they say shit like, oh, we should um we should leave it up so uh, history don't repeat it. Nah, nigga. <laughs> nigga no. Oh, you ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. I tell these people all the time, I'm, I'm not my grandfather. I slap the shit out of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My grandfather probably did it too, but yeah. I for certain. <laughs> Yo, I seen, I seen somebody break down why they didn't like that uh, we are not our ancestors. Uh, I know you didn't say your ancestor. You said grandfather, which was a yeah. totally different era, but... Um, they were saying, you know, pretty much they was like, yo, that is very, like, disrespectful to our ancestors or whatever. But, I mean, in a way it is, but at the same time, it's like... I'm just saying times have changed, B. Yeah. Like, it's all it is. You, you not getting away with that shit now. Like, yeah. if you, you slap me, I'm going to punch your fucking teeth out your mouth, nigga. Like, <laughs> if you call me a nigga to my face, you're going to see these hands. <laughs> Fast. Like, Straight I said... This video from, I don't know if it was the 40s, 50s, 60s. I know it was in black and white. This black dude walking down the street. I think everybody done seen it over the time, over years, but, and they were just pushing this nigga, like, kicking pushing. him and, uh, and kicking him and shit. Yeah, uh, no, it was other bullshit. Yeah. And I he was that. just eating that shit, like, just walking. And the fucked up thing is, it's like, I seen some people in the comments, like, boy, that would have never been me. And I'm like, yo, it's like it's different. You can't it's really like say eighty that. white people out there. Yeah, like yeah. If, you, you, if he would have reacted, you, you t- like yeah, you turn around, they're gonna string you up at the nearest tree, nigga. Yeah. Like, like you that's gotta know when to take that... your L's in life. You gotta know when to take them. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta pick and choose your battles in life. You definitely gotta do that. Yeah, dog, it yeah, was man. like fifty of them out there pushing them. I'm like, yo, well, they not killing them, so they gonna let them slide today. So dear, got... dear racist, and I'm not just referring we're, to white people. You can we'll rally up and come back for these niggas later. Go ahead. My message to the racist is that you're going to turn the other cheek before I will. 
Cause I'm gonna slap the cold shit out of you. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Nowadays, no. Nah, it's it's different nowadays. I'm not gonna let that shit slide. Like, not at all. Your fucking and, uh, cheeks gonna turn rosy red. <laughs> I'm a, and I'm a backhand your shit. <laughs> give him that luckle love. Just give him the top of the that top of the hand love, bro. You know what I'm saying? Backhand the fuck out you. Um, my, tour, my tours hold twelve. Ten people coming with me, B. <laughs> <laughs> at least ten of y'all coming with me. Mm-hmm. Hey man, I'd rather be judged by twelve than carried by six. That's a fact. Even though the American judicial system is some bullshit, and you might as well get carried by six before you let these motherfucking Americans judge you by twelve. But mm-hmm. you gotta get a Jewish lawyer. I love our black lawyers, and I'm looking for a great black lawyer to represent me. I actually had a black lawyer represent me a few times. Good. So well, but if you want if you want to get out of the justice system you know you got to play their games sometimes be and that's just hey up. i can't tell no lies nigga tyler farrell got me off the little john <laughs> green side of a jb <laughs> tyler farrell got me off and and nigga 10 years later i still don't know if i'm pronouncing this nigga name right but <laughs> i got the top white lawyers in the state <laughs> yeah hola miss kim I think her volume's up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her volume is down. Hey, how you doing? Um, I think your uh your microphone is muted. I don't know if you can hear us. No, yeah, I can oh, hear there you. you go. Oh, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry I'm late. Actually, we just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just started, started like like maybe <laughs> like ten minutes ago, something like that. Yeah. We're yeah, pro-black, so that means we're definitely on black people that. time. <laughs> you, said, you said we pro-black, so we're on black people time? Yeah, we're definitely on black people time. <laughs> that shit is real. It's the one thing I won't take from y'all white people. Color people time is a real thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. PPT. But now, nah, so, uh, Kim, we're currently talking about um, uh, a subject that, that you're very vocal about, which is these statues and um, <laughs> what, what they represent to these racist people. And what they do not represent to us. Yeah, Confederate statues. That's what we're talking about right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, what I was saying is, you know, the fact that they are fighting so hard for these statues to stay up is really telling. You know what I'm saying? You claim on one end that you're a patriot and you love America, but you're fighting to keep up the statues of traitors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, make that and, shit make sense. And this, you fight into uphold statues of people who literally try to succeed from the country that you claim you love so much <laughs> exactly like, like i don't know if they trash. know <laughs> i don't know if they think succeed and succeed is the same word <laughs> or, <Yeah>. or what but <laughs> right. that's not how that works <laughs> no no it isn't and i i bro for the life of me i don't get it you're you're literally just praising and trying to keep monuments to people who killed your own you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Own countrymen. They 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 said fuck your country. They said fuck the Constitution, Bill of Rights. We don't believe in none of that. We start in our own country, and then we're gonna kill you and take over the rest of the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you got monuments to these people. Like I said, that would be like going to like, you know, Israel and seeing fucking like Nazi Germany statues. You know what I'm saying? Or Poland yeah. is seeing statues of uh, of Hitler. That shit is it's it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So they going so hard. And I'm not saying you need to destroy all these shits. Take them and put them in the goddamn museum or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But they don't need to be on our streets. They don't need to be in squares. They don't need to be in parks. They don't need to be schools and shit named after them. They don't need to be none of that. Like, that's unacceptable. Right. You know? I think the whole premise, too, of the Confederacy is that it would not have been formed were it not for them wanting to uphold slavery. Everyone True. was proud to be an American until the issue of slavery became well known and people were you know deciding whether or not this is something that we should allow to go on in our country so the whole premise of the confederacy is built on ownership of black bodies yeah there exactly. would be no confederacy where that had that not been an issue you know it wasn't Absolutely. about religious freedom it wasn't about economic freedom uh you know it wasn't about a group of people feeling isolated or marginalized they uh, economically were doing better than the North in some, in, uh, for many years. It's just about slavery, you know? Mm-hmm. And the Confederacy only lasted for, what, five years? 
And so you have all this, he gets, my great, great grandfather, you have more family members who lived outside of that five year time, <laughs> time span than you do within it. So, you know, it's yeah. not about Southern pride. It's just really about holding on to hate. That's just, that's holding just keep on it. to hate. Yeah, that's just. And I think the other piece of that too is just sometimes, like I've had these discussions with my friends, white culture, outside of what's appropriated from Latino culture, Latinx culture, Asian culture, Black culture, and if you take all of what's appropriated away, if you take hate away, there's not much else there for them to really. I was say, they don't have a culture. Celebrate. <laughs> Claim yeah, exactly. as yeah, their true. own, you know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so I think they rally around what little bit they have uh, without really educating themselves on what it means. Yeah, true. How, how can even, you rally themselves around America and America is stolen from the Native Americans? Like your foundation ain't even good. Yeah, it's just I, and I all think and, and all Native Americans wasn't Tawano, just to let people <laughs> know. Like they were all. <laughs> What what we, what people consider Indians? Which, yeah, they, they wasn't just <laughs> all. all like, I don't know why we keep calling them Indians. They're not from India, but they're not not all the, the natives that we see that are like fair skinned Mexican looking. Like they're not all of them. Like there was people that was dark as y'all. Especially the fact that we have to call West, them Native Americans and um like Fien like Arizona area and all that. They was dark. Mm. A lot of the Aboriginals from Australia was here, like way before you know. Um, Christopher Columbus never came. All that shit. So, mm. well, I think um, I think man, America. When we're talking about the foundation of America, it needs to atone for all of its messy history, and that's why we got all this shit going on now. They never really um atoned for slavery. You know what I'm saying? Jim mm -hmm. Crow, redlining, all the shit that went on. You know what I'm saying? From the start of this, they just kind of brush that shit aside like oh don't worry about it we overlooked your pain we don't care and then now they're dealing with the repercussions of it mm. now you know what i'm saying we're not even not even really dealing with it it's just it's coming it's bubbling up all of this that's been like in the black community that's just been passed on for generation to generation is bubbling up and these people don't want to face facts because the, the majority of them live in the bubble you know what i'm saying the majority of them don't, in their don't bubble. Exactly. They're comfortable in their bubble. And then when you try to call them out, they feel some type of way. Well, I never owned slaves or and you never was a slave, so you should get over it. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, we're not going with that. Nah, narrative. but you, you're still benefiting from the, the your fucking ancestors that did own slaves. You're still benefiting from the fucking the system that they put in place. So, fuck all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I, I gave it to him like, if alcoholism can be passed through generations of family, what do you think slavery and that mindset did to our people? Like, <laughs> And it did. It's not like we're far removed from any of this. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying we're not talking a thousand years ago. They were like, going no. through the sixties. We're talking 50, 60 years ago. So no, we all in our thirties, which means at the bare minimum, all of our parents were alive, whether they were children or teenagers or whatever, during the civil rights time mm. of the sixties. Like, this was like my mother went to segregated schools. Like. Look, I put it this way, man. The 16th Street Church bombing in Birmingham, that was in 1963. Yeah. My mom was alive, and she ain't no elderly lady. You know what I'm saying? This, my mom this, was born in 1957, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? I was so, born in 54. Like, so, so this, 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 this was a long time ago. This is, this yeah. is, you know what I'm saying? This is within a generation. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, that narrative that, oh, it's over, racism is over, and they love to say, well, we elected Barack Obama, so racism is over. That's bullshit. That's a false narrative. That's, other bullshit that they try to throw on it to say, oh, you guys should get over this. You should move on. You know what I'm saying? You just, uh, what is it? Uh, they try to say, we're trying to claim to be victim. We like victimhood or some bullshit. They try to, yeah. try to get Barack, we are victims. Barack was cool. Me, we were. Barack was cool. He sang a dance. But if they really want to show me that they with it, nigga, elect Boosie. Make Boosie president. <laughs> like, how about that? How about we make Go <laughs> <laughs> <Slow> down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Pro black as I am, I don't know if I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, I don't know about that one. <laughs> if you'd have said Jay Z, I might have been like, cool, <laughs> but no, <laughs> speak, speaking on the election, shit, I mean, look who we got, you know what I'm saying, now and in, in, uh, in the presidency. And I definitely believe, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. speaking of Barack Obama, got two I believe, perverts, two, yeah. two, two damn yeah. child molestation perverts running against each other. Don't even get me started on that. But we got to vote. America. They literally, yo, to me, Biden and Trump, they two, they two versions of each other. 
Yeah. To call yeah. a spade a spade. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, people always want to negate the fact that Joe Biden is the one that wrote the massive in, uh, mass incarceration crime bill of the 90s that Bill Clinton passed. The three strikes bill? Like, mm-hmm. that was him. He wrote that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think it was the three strikes. No, it wasn't the three strike bill. It, it was the, the three strike. Bill. No, it was the mass incarceration bill. That, yeah. Like, mandatory sentences for yeah. um, certain crimes. Which, when he explained it, was because he saw disproportionately a white person and a black person commit the same crime. The white person gets six months in jail, time suspended, and the black person would get eight years in jail. And so the way around that was to make it mandatory that whoever committed this crime was going to get a minimum of five years in jail for that crime. Yeah, and the shit still but, never held up. It was still just black people getting Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's what happens when you treat symptoms of a larger problem without acknowledging and like you were saying, accounting for being accountable yeah. and uh, you know responsible for a system that you benefit off of. Yeah. Um, Very well put. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's got my vote. I mean, I guess he does have my vote, but I'm kind of <laughs> sick of Democrats and Republicans too, honestly. You know, like, it's even, just so hard to get a third party in there. Minneapolis, the mayor is a Democrat. So all of this yeah. stuff before it was put in the public eye, all of this stuff was happening under somebody who was a Democrat. And I feel like because they know they have the black vote in the pocket they've stopped really listening to or trying to um, do things. It's a lot of performative support without much else to go along with it. No tangible results, you know? Mm-hmm. No real, no real policy Democrats change. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, no, no, no real policy change. It's mostly just, oh, they put it on stuff for shows. Like the whole right. feeling the other day. Corporate America. Ken Pay Claw thing. Ken Pay Claw thing. Great segue. I don't need that. I need you to get up off your knee and change some laws. First of all, that Ken Pay Claw shit was the worst shit they could have possibly done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know who authorized that. African American. Yeah. It's like, this is what happens when even as a white person, if you're trying to be an ally, if you're not willing to listen to the people who are being oppressed, if you're not willing to take a back seat, mm-hmm. support from the back and understand a culture before you just move in and, and uh, you know, do something performative like that, you really like miss your opportunity um, to make people feel supported. There's no way I would, as a Congress a woman, uh, show up with a sombrero on my head to say I'm here to fight for immigration. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. But you got a kente cloth on, which is not African American. You're not in red, black, and green. Yeah, like, you didn't exactly. take a moment of silence and put on lift every voice and sing. You got on a fake kente cloth. Mm-hmm. You don't know what it means. Patterns mean different things. It might be for a funeral, sis. You don't even know. Yeah. What kind of cocaine were they doing? <laughs> They you know, went. They went and got the shits that people get for graduations and shit. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a bad that was a bad showing. When I saw that, it was like, okay, it seems like I get it. A lot of people are supporting Black Lives Matter now, and they want to show their support and they want to be allies. But now it's almost getting to the point where it's like, it's just it's comical. You're doing this shit for a show. Yeah, but at like, the same it's, it's, time, it's trendy, it's it's trendy to be Black on Lives yeah. Matter's t-shirts. Yeah. It's, it's but at the same right time, now to be supporting Black people. We need to be, I'm glad you said that, because my, yeah. point, my point on that was, we need to be wary of these companies who don't really give a fuck about us, but they know that if they put a Black Lives Matter fucking statement on their website, that it's going to drive traffic there, because they know that we have a $1.6 trillion buying power. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and we only account for nineteen percent of the fucking population of America. So you can release you a statement that you care yeah. about black people, and that's it. Like yeah. look at look at fucking Starbucks, Starfucks, whatever you want to call them. I, I've mm-hmm. seen different names; they were all funny. But look at them. Like first they wasn't supporting it, and then they was like, "Oh yeah." Uh, actually, and then they caught some backlash. They caught a little them. backlash. Mm-hmm. I would have respected it more if they would have stood on their shit. Not saying I would have respected them as a company, but I would have respected them more if they'd have stood on it like, yo, we got a uniform to uphold and we just gonna, we just gonna leave it there. 
I mean, we still weren't gonna fuck with you, but oh yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. At least it oh. would have been more respectable. Like, yo, we got a uniform up, ho. We support da da da. Like they could have, they could have figured out a way. But now you backpedaling. It's like, yo, you, I respect you less than I respected you when you posted the shit. It was a point that, like, and that's strike daily. two for Starbucks. Publicly, anyway, we don't even know how many times they really striked out, but that's strike two. I mean, I think it's important while these companies are putting out these letters saying they care so much about black people. That's the time, honestly, to me to withhold from Mm -hmm. spending until then you see some real. Let me see your executive board. Yeah. Let me see how many people of color you. Let me see where the scholarship money is going. You say you're giving to different organizations. How come none of those organizations are in inner cities or urban areas or for, you know, Mm -hmm. um, children of color or even going to immigration issues or something like that? Um, But just to appease people with words and semantics, I'm... Yeah, I'm not here for it. Yeah, oh yeah, we know that y'all PR department is nice with the wordplay. Like, we don't even... Like, I mean, I'm sure this point, it was, it was a template going ben around. I rock with Ben and Jerry's. Oh yeah, Ben and Jerry's is with the shits. Ben and Jerry's had some incarceration yeah. ice cream back yeah. in like 2013. Yeah, like, Ben and Jerry's, they've been like that from the get-go. Ben and Jerry's yeah. always been down for the cause from the get-go. But a lot of these other companies yeah. that just kind of jumped on the bag, bandwagon, nah. God. Ten minutes. It was daily though. It was like you was getting emails of companies. I'm sure it was just templates that were going around that they were using. <laughs> bro, like these like, people were mad. We bro. care like, about you guys. You were mad. Like you could, you could relax. Turn, I, turned, we love I turned on. I turned on Call of Duty and seen a Black Lives Matter logo. Across I know. The I knew they were. mad. And these people were oh, mad yeah. as hell. Oh. They were mad. They were real mad. Really they were like. Mad. They were like, oh, there you go with that virtue signaling. Da da da. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But what are you doing, Activision? Now that, that makes. You know, a billion dollars a year every time one of these games come out. What are you doing all that money? That logo's cool. That's great. You don't pissed off a bunch of incels. I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what else are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Where's the, where's all, the results of this? Start and all black users at the top of the food like, chain. Benefited from privilege their whole life and who, like y'all were saying, existed mm-hmm. in a bubble. If mm. you're just now coming outside of that, that might be real edgy. Yeah. Yeah. banner you know <laughs> yeah like we we did <laughs> something so great that might feel real like radical real edgy yeah. mm-hmm. that's a good viewpoint to look at it from <laughs> yeah and the only reason i didn't shoot down a lot of it because i don't feel like a lot of them are genuine but the reason i didn't shoot down a lot of it because it is it's, it's picking up steam it's a process with the bigger picture yeah. so yeah. even yeah. if it ain't genuine that's like um if if i donate fucking a million dollars to like fucking cancer like funds or some shit and they like oh he only did it for pr like my nigga i still did it though like whatever reason i did i i, I it, it still helped it still no, helped the situation yeah yeah i get I that. Agree with that i agree with that so yeah but that. that's what i'm and as far as this election season is going on that's what i want to see from some of these politicians like i'm gonna keep it real i don't i don't i'm not democrat i'm not republican i don't trust none of these politicians just keeping it funky. I don't trust none of them. Nah, I think they, they all go golfing and shit together. Exa- exactly. These guys are all friends. They all go to the same little restaurants. They hang out together and they get on TV and be like, oh, it's these people's fault. You know what I'm saying? And they get us arguing back and forth. You said what? Oh, Bernie? Vote for Bernie. I was disappointed he didn't get it. Uh, me too. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I wanted him to get the nomination too. But just like they did with Hillary Clinton, the fix was already in. They knew who they were going to yeah. try to nominate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying they did the same thing to Bernie last time. They picked Hillary. She was a bad candidate. You know what I'm saying? You know she was a bad candidate. She lost against Trump. I mean, come on, man. For real. You know what I'm saying? It was a setup, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. The was fix was in. The fix was in with the DNC. They already knew who they wanted their candidate to be. They already knew that. What was the lady that was running the DNC? Uh, Debbie uh, Wasserman Schultz or whatever. She oh, was yeah. best friends with fucking Hillary Clinton. She already had the fix in. She knew who she wanted to be, then you know the nominee, and they just fucked Bernie out of it, and they did it again this time with Joe Biden. And Joe Biden is a terrible candidate, and uh, and all honestly, I think he's gonna get destroyed in November. Just keep it wouldn't surprise me. You know? It wouldn't surprise me. The reason why I agree, is especially if they released the Corona vaccine or the you know, yeah. whatever they had for that right before the election is going. It's going to help him look good. So it yeah. wouldn't surprise me if he got washed. But the reason why I agree, too, is I see a lot of black people not not with this Biden shit. And, of course, you know they're not going to vote for Trump. So, so I see a lot of vote. people talking about not voting again uh-huh. or writing in somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not it's not going to work. I I, no. I feel like 
the idea that we need more than a two party system, I think that's that's going to be the most effective. I mean, it's just so because of the money that's behind them and all the power that they got yeah. from from their past history, it's hard to get a third party candidate in there. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, they'll get one. Like they had, uh, what was the old boy Gary Johnson? I think it was the yeah. last election, but he only got like I, don't, I can't even remember how what percentage of the vote he got. But so that's what I'm saying. To actually, to actually get them into the White House, into the position of president, uh, is, is oh, yeah. impossible. Yeah, well, because that's why. Like when Trump first, like, say he was gonna start running and shit, like, a lot of people was like behind him until the motherfucker start opening his mouth, and then we was like, oh, oh nah, because mm-hmm. they looked at him like, yo, he can't be bought. He's not really a politician. He might be the one that turns all this shit around. Then this motherfucker went to the first rally and opened his mouth. We was like, oh, nah, this ain't it, fam. <laughs> like, I, 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 knew, I knew Trump was a scam artist from the get-go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, didn't, I had no support for that dude, even before he opened his mouth. Because I'm like, dude, you're a game show. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're a reality TV show host. You're not a, you know what I'm saying? What yeah. the fuck is you going to do? I'm surprised at the number of white people who don't feel scammed by him though even with yeah they do a thousand corona yeah. deaths they just don't want to say it people on kyle, kyle just said it more than kyle just said it right there they don't want to admit it they know they know they yeah. fucked up they know they fucked up they just you're, not, if you're not rich and white you got scammed people out here now that have the trump signs for 2020 up and it's like what did he do in the last four years that would secure your vote again like, you know, I nigga. get it the first time. Because he tells it like it is. He don't like them niggas. He don't like them Spanish people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why. But he also doesn't like poor white people. You know, on the end of the day, he, Trump is not coming to NASCAR. Trump no, is he isn't. His time at a monster truck rally. Trump is not coming to a country music co- Like, those are not his people either. The same as Mitt Romney. Mitt they- Romney is not dealing with people like that you know what i mean a, a yeah. poor white person has more in common with a poor black person than they do with a rich white millionaire who is telling you they're yeah. gonna do something for you donald trump ran for president because he knew he could make even more money and in the process the people yeah. who are already rich were also going to make more money which is cool well i've been telling right. people for the longest time man that a lot of people especially poor whites have been voting against their own interests for years mm-hmm. by support by supporting policies that are bad for them, but they still do it because they're like, I'm a conservative, I'm a Republican, this is my team. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't turn it into almost like like a sports, a WWE. You're supposed to support your team no matter what. You know what I'm saying? No matter how bad they, you know what I'm saying, they treat you and they've been voting against their own interests for years. It's the narrative too. Them, you can show them this, you can show them the proof, you can show it to them on paper yeah. and they yeah. still won't, they'll still, they'll still go vote. You know like when you, bring up, when you bring up welfare, they try to make it seem like it's mostly a black thing. There are plenty of poor white people in welfare, but yet those poor white people in welfare are still going to go vote Republican who are trying to cut it off or what, whatnot. <laughs> We're the largest recipient of welfare right. are white females. Uh-huh. Fact. Yeah, it's a fact. Yeah. I mean, it's but you're fact. talking about voting right. against their own interests. Were it not for like social issues, well, not even social issues, but racial issues, I would almost argue that black people vote against their own interests because there's a large pocket of African Americans that are more conservative, that want mm-hmm. limited government, mm-hmm. that aren't making enough to even want to have a good portion of their taxes put towards all of these different programs. Mm-hmm. But because of racial issues, continue to support see, Democrats. And see, my, they turn around and do nothing for Black people. Nothing my argument with that is, <laughs> is a lot of people, like a lot of, we'll say rich Black people, they'll back the, the Democrat in public you know, because it sounds, and this is how I feel, I don't know if it's necessarily the truth, but I feel like they'll back the Democrats in public because it's good for them. It's good for them to say they're supposed to because they're black. But realistically, when they go look at their tax brackets and what they're doing for their finances and shit, I think a lot of them, when they get in that voting booth, they're still voting Republican. Because once you get in that voting booth, it, you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. True. Very true. Mm. But yeah, this shit. Uh, we got our little two minute warning. I don't know why Zoom has been giving me a time limit lately. Cause uh, we're pro black. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, niggas had two two pro black episodes in, in in two weeks. They like, yo, we this is not gonna fly. So I'm about to just shut it down and send y'all uh, invite links right back. Um, we probably got maybe thirty more minutes, and then like I ain't gonna keep y'all all day. Yeah, so you want to do it in like pieces or whatever and break it up? Okay, I got you. Yeah, because I, I edit the video anyway, so.
Okay. Doc, you late as hell. We talked about the two minute one and two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got two of these for you. you know Yeah, people, I'm still here. I know y'all can hear me, but y'all can't see me. I'm outside smoking a cigarette. Um, trying, to be, trying to be mysterious and shit. Yeah, you already know what it is. <laughs> but anyway. Nigga, we already seen you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're talking about, you know what I'm saying, uh, what's going to go on with this election in November yeah, yeah. and as it relates to the black community. And for real, for real, like, you already talk about the NFL. Nah, we about to um we about oh, we to didn't... wrap this up and get into that, and then I want to get into this uh. Okay, I came uh, late, so I don't know what was. Not... You literally <laughs> came in maybe ten minutes after everybody else. Yeah, so, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, I mean, I think we pretty much summed up what we had to sum up when it comes to politics. I mean, all we're gonna do is keep regurgitating the same thing and beating the dead horse. Like we True. pretty much already said. True. But yeah, the NFL. Changing their stance up and apologizing. Roger, let's talk about this fool here. You know what I'm saying? Let's they still ain't apologized to Kaepernick, though. Bro. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. They haven't. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, now this is just my theory. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might disagree or whatnot. But this whole changing the stand shit, they just doing that shit because they realize, damn, you know what? We should have just agreed with that peaceful protest of kneeling during the anthem Ooh. versus them out there. You know what I'm saying? The street tear <laughs> shit up. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, now we realize that that protesting wasn't so bad compared to what's going on now. You know what I'm saying? And that's just them trying to switch gears because of that. I don't think I don't think Roger Goodell or the NFL really gives a flying fuck. You know what I'm saying? It just it's good PR. Bingo. Um, I feel like it's still to me it's um just another like slap in the face because it's once again you're you're hijacking um someone's form of protest and and putting yourself instead of like i said supporting from the back seat putting yourself in the front when you could have allowed players who were already taking the knee and just mm-hmm. given them a platform to to say what it was that was offending them or what it was that they were protesting about and just giving them the permission to just be but instead you hijack it you fire people you tell them no just to come back and go, well, maybe, you know, maybe I guess there is something to this, uh, you know, police brutality and all of that. We're going to start a, what's this um, thing they have going on with Jay-Z where they're trying to, like, do community outreach with oh, yeah. basically uh, yeah. funneling Hove. money into that. Salute to Hove. I salute to Hove. But I, we shout out Hove every episode but, just but that because that he always does something made- dope. That made me a little suspicious, though, man, because the fact that he didn't, you know what I'm saying? Not that he had to reach out to um, Kaepernick, but it was just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You 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 had to support, you had to, I stand with Cap shirt but on. But see, and all the thing shit. is, we never really got to see any of that unfold because niggas ain't even give Jay-Z a chance. Like, we we acting like he's not one of the most calculated people <laughs> in the, in the I, yo, I, yeah, I give him that. Yeah, he is. He, out, they didn't have. I mean, and I guess that's the point I was trying to make was they left the people at the forefront of that out of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna fire Kaepernick, but then we're gonna invite in Jay Z to talk to us about this. Because I, I mean, but kind of like we said earlier, like it's a start, though. It's a start. You got to start somewhere. I don't understand. Like, and even if you didn't want to invite Kaepernick in for whatever reason, why didn't you invite in? somebody whose work is in that field. Mm, I didn't yeah. invite Angela Rye or Cory Booker or, you know, like there are so many, uh, if you really wanted to make a concerted effort to show that you're trying to change or you're trying to be inclusive, but you leave people out of the conversation, you invite in a rapper because I think you think that's going to appease Black America. And yeah. then there's no rollout other than Jay-Z sitting at the table, you know, talking shit about what comes after marching. Boom. You know, where was the, the action plan after that, which is what I was looking for, you know? Yeah. And I'm not, and, I'm, and when I said that, I wasn't trying to criticize Jay-Z, but it was like, she she hit all the points right there, which is y'all inviting a rapper, you know what I'm saying? The rapper, not a rapper, the rapper, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nobody bigger than Jigga, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you didn't you didn't bring nobody else to the table. Like, yeah, look, we, we're cool with this rapper. Remember, he's the biggest rapper there is, and we're cool with him, and he's working with us, so uh, 
please forget about whatever it is you're trying to protest about and just uh, be happy because we got some niggas sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. That's what that shit felt like to me. Um, but no criticism to Jigon. Maybe he has a plan on the back end of that. But like she said, they should have had some other people come to the table. Um, even if they didn't want Colin to come in there, they should have had somebody else come in there and sit during these meetings to discuss what the actual plan was and um, what, what we were going to see that was tangible. You know what I'm saying? What was, what, what was going to come out of this? You know what I'm saying? Not just he's what he picks to, like, I guess the, the music direction or some shit, whatever it was they, they hired him for. You know what I'm saying? As far as like picking like the yeah, halftime show. The halftime show. Yeah. yeah. Like, he, he, it was that, he, he was he was also supposed to be able to direct where it's you know how they say they're donating all these yeah where community they say they're relations. donating all this money to these communities. He was supposed to be yeah. able to direct where it's going. I True. just feel like it's another flex on controlling the narrative. You know. I mean, you have they, and they're, they're, me, so we're going to control that conversation and make it about the American flag. Then we're going to make it about soldiers and servicemen in the military. Yeah, and not and then, police brutality. So now we're going to control the conversation by bringing in somebody completely new so we don't have to apologize or retract what we were saying about this player. And we'll bring in Jay-Z so we can continue to control. What, I, what I will say in Roger Goodell's defense, and my homeboy pointed it out to me, I had to do some research on it. He, he really just takes the bullet for the 32 NFL owners. Mm -hmm. He don't really make no decisions. He's just like the president. He takes mm -hmm. the bullets for what Congress and everybody else says. So that's what that's what Roger Goodell's position is. He's just the face of it. Um, Roger Goodell's daddy actually, after doing some research, was a congressman and voted for civil rights and the Voting Act, and he was against the Vietnam War. So just by judging what kind of man his daddy was, I personally don't think that Roger Goodell is that type of person. But the position that he's in, and they have all these racist owners, which we know they are, Jerry Jones and the rest of them. Oh, fast. Oh. Mm -hmm. he, he's just taking the bullet for them, so he has to say what, what they want. Yeah, and I mean, it's still years, four years later, it still baffles me that the NFL doesn't support more black shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, dog, 85% of your fucking, <laughs> of your talent and of your employees are black. I mean... But if them 32 owners don't care, like if yeah. if 25 of the 32 owners don't care. But I guarantee, I guarantee if the, if, if the highest, I guarantee if the highest static players. How many of us watched football last season? I did. My, I'm, I'm last season was my of, first season back watching. My owner likes last black people. He supports but listen, He does active work. I'm going to I'm gonna tell. I, I I told it on an episode. I'm gonna tell you why because Cause my owner, my team owner, loves black people. He's active in the community. <laughs> they do work all throughout Philadelphia. What well, the forty the forty ers do too? Like he active. Yeah, yeah the forty ers <laughs> do too. Money with my he was the only team. But this this right here. Nah, this ain't why. But the forty ers do too. And we was the only team that was actually standing up with the bullshit last season. Yeah. But no, I started watching because Cap took the money. He took the money and he signed a non-disclosure and I was like, okay, so I don't think he, I, I, I think this shit is done. Like, cause the, the whole boycott was until Cap gets a job again. So once he came to that settlement and he was, and he took that money and I call it hush money because he signed a non-disclosure as he took the money. So to me, that sounds like hush money. So I was like, okay, Kaepernick took the hush money. He ain't, uh, I haven't seen him on no social media platforms, which he's been on every day trying to get a job again. So I was like, okay, I guess th that's it. Like, he's never going to work because he took the money. He got paid $60 million or however much it was. We'll never know. And I was like, all right, well, shit. The okay, boy uh, is kind of pointless now. Full disclosure, I'm not a sports guy. I don't, I don't watch NFL. I don't watch NBA. I don't watch any of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But had I did, I still wouldn't have, I wouldn't have watched that shit. You know, yeah, everybody that, has their reason, but I wouldn't have supported reason. it. But I don't yeah. watch sports like that. So I'm surprised more people didn't turn turn off the, uh, the football. In my defense, I watch all the games on illegal internet television, so they don't really get my ratings or my money. I mean, I did too, so I don't know if that actually counts. As, I mean, I, I physically watched it, but I don't know if that actually counts. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like any, any organization that is saying we don't want the inmates running the prison or yeah, that, was, that was a wild statement. Trouble, you know, it's that just, was a wild statement. That, that was, was a wild statement. statement. I feel like 
you know, like Montgomery boy bus boycott lasted for years. It wasn't just like yeah. a couple of weeks and then everybody went back to doing what they were doing. And at some yeah. point we got to be no. comfortable with being a little but, bit but, uncomfortable. L- really, last year was the first older. year and, and Kyle tell you, cause we, we had a couple of debates. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm not, last year was my first year actually watching. And, and a lot of people made jokes because, the, the, you know, the 49ers went to the Super Bowl. We lost, I, I, whatever. But they was like, oh, yeah, you would pick this year to start watching again. So, like, I did go years without watching. But, like I said, after Cap took the money, in my mind, at that time, I was just like, yeah. I'm. And, again, my big thing was with me watching was literally legit just listen to what my team owner said and, and how the people how he was holding the organization. He, if he would have came out and said some wild shit, I probably wouldn't have watched. Like, as much as I love my team, I probably wouldn't have watched. But he didn't come out and say no wild shit. He was in complete solidarity. He was cool. Like, y'all, if y'all want to kneel, y'all can kneel. I don't have no problem with it. He's putting money in the community. He lets a lot of our players run. They're on the Players Coalition for the program. So he let them go. Yeah. And do what he was. So I'm not mad at him. Yeah, I didn't support none of that shit. <laughs> I'm just keeping real. Um, you don't even, yeah, do. you don't even watch it anyway. I don't give a shit. The point, the, no, but even then, let's just say it was something that I'm actually interested in. I still would have boycotted the shit out of them. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not criticizing y'all decision. Y'all can do whatever y'all want. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're, you're entitled to have, feel however you want. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have supported none of that shit because although the teams were doing, there were certain teams that were doing what they were supposed to do, the organization itself were not supporting the right to protest and that's in our constitution you know what i'm saying it's okay to protest um for these people to go stand at the michigan state capitol building and protest that they're mad because they can't go get a haircut and all that other dumb ass shit because they're COVID 19 but when we protest something actual that's really happening uh police brutality and he's protesting it in the most respectful way in my opinion he ain't out there running in the field shutting down the game he's simply kneeling doing a national anthem which the national anthem has a racist version that they took out of that shit that a lot of people don't like to talk about you know what i'm saying they take out of it they just don't ever play it it's still there. yeah it, yeah it's still in there but they don't play it so i said they took yeah, it out so you, you know what I'm saying why are you mad at this man expressing himself when it's in the constitution you know what i'm saying and it's also it's not like he's lying it's the truth you know what i'm saying it's the truth there's actual evidence of this shit you know what i'm saying there's actual evidence that there is no police accountability and he's bringing attention to it. Do you like the way he's protesting? No. But if your protest is not visible, then what the fuck is the point of it? You know what I'm saying? But see, the thing is, it, there is no right way to protest when it comes to them. No. Because no matter which way we do it, it's the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I think back then it was that way with a lot of companies, though. Just looking at it from a business standpoint, I couldn't, I mean, like you said, his protest was peaceful. It was it was silent. He didn't really cause any kind of disruption other than ruffling people's feathers. But a lot of us can't go to our job and just protest how we want to at our job either. No, I mean, that's the truth, but... Because it's just, a business at the end of the day. So, at the same like I said, time, they shouldn't have tripped about the way he did it because of the way he did it. It was probably the best way that it could have been but, done. But then again, at our, at our jobs, we're not forced when we come into work yeah. to stand for the national anthem at our job. Yeah, and that's what they, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not different. even that. Like, there's nobody on the Zoom that's not replaceable at their job. Mm-hmm. Like, like in, immediately. You know what I'm saying? Like, they could throw out a classified ads for any one of us. Mm-hmm. Nigga, a uh, $100 million quarterback, you can't just replace this nigga that easily. A person that's bringing you hundreds of millions of dollars a year, like you can't just replace him. And I feel like if more players would have felt it, would have realized that, and more players would have stood with it, they would have, they would have, they would have shook the system. Mm-hmm. They would have, they, they would have had to listen. So if you get all the the top statistical players, the top running back, the top receivers, the top quarterbacks to all stand or kneel or whatever the case, what they gonna say? Okay, you gonna fire Aaron Rodgers? You gonna fire Tom Brady? Hell no, it's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that, let's let's talk about Drew Brees. Let's, let's talk about him. Let's, let's not. No, let's talk about Drew Brees. Let's talk about um, his initial statement. You know what I'm saying? I'll never respect anyone who kneels for the front of the flag or kneels during the national anthem, and then he switched gears real quick when he started catching that energy. You know, I don't um, give a fuck about Drew Brees. I love cancer <sighs> so much. I really do. But um. <laughs> I mean, it's an insincere apology to say the least. Oh, it is. But I think it he's is. only he's only saying what 
He felt a lot of white America is saying they have hijacked that and made it about an American flag. Yeah. Instead of actually looking at the issue. Yeah. Yeah. The flag um, is just a fucking piece of cloth. Well, they they their, no, their claim is that let's talk it's about, disrespecting the troops. Yeah, fuck all that. Let's talk about all they're not the fighting for the flag. They're fighting for this country, the land, so, and the people. Fuck the flag. When they made the flag, you know they made a, a like a list of rules of shit you can and can't do with the flag, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know that they break these fucking rules damn near every day? Like, you're not supposed to fly the flag a certain way. You're not supposed to have this shit this way. You're not supposed to, like, all the shit that you're not supposed to do, they do. Like, they mm-hmm. got American flag, bathing suits, thongs. Motherfucking mm-hmm. shorts. You're not supposed to wear the shit as an attire. They got all kind nigga. July 4th, everybody looks like a fucking dipset video. Mm-hmm. Like everybody walk mm-hmm. around looking like they with the diplomats. Like, mm-hmm. but that shit is against it. So they nitpick, they they pick and choose which part of the shit actually offends them. If it's comfortable, if it if it if it appeases to their comfort, then oh yeah, you can do that. Well, that's because it's not even about the flag. They just don't want us to protest. It's not about uh, the flag. They don't want to protest. They don't give a fuck what it is. They just want you to shut up and be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Play your role. Stay in your place, niggas. Basically, that's what it is. You so know these what motherfuckers saying? say, oh, you, you shouldn't disrespect the flag, but you let one of these little white girls that don't got no butt cheeks, you can still see the thong string showing. Just put on the American flag <laughs> thong, and they're going to be like, oh, God, I love America. Come on. Oh, man. yeah. Without a doubt. There was an American flag in the street the other day. I rolled over it. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the white lady that was driving in front of me like she's seen it so she swerved around it I was like nope and then you did a, a burnout on that shit bro <laughs> you stop in the middle of the street and do a donut on these it wheels, bitch. but yeah it's like we the only we the only fucking group of people that don't that aren't allowed to pick and choose what motherfucking outrages us like they get to pick it for us, but then they get to pick and choose what outrages them and what we should be outraged by. I think they choose to be outraged by our outrage, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. How yeah. dare you? How dare you be mad at some shit that doesn't affect me? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Why are you mad at some shit that doesn't bother me? You know what I'm saying? Basically. Yeah, you know. but me personally, I don't give a fuck about what Drew Brees is talking about. I don't accept his apology. I definitely, I accepted less after he posted that dumbass picture on Instagram with the apology. With, with the, the hand? Fucking, with the fucking the Google image picture? The no, I didn't, I didn't see to, that. No, the shit still had the Google fucking watermark on the picture. The watermark <laughs> on the shit. Like, yeah, I... You I can't even take the fire to get the watermark off? Yeah, I don't, I don't respect it. Cause it, it won't genuine. It won't real. It won't genuine. What My, it was is Drew Brees was like, "Oh shit, these niggas ain't gonna block for me no more." Let me <laughs> motherfucking. <laughs> My own teammates is talking shit about me. Yeah, let me goddamn, let me rectify this at least for them. But yeah, I just I, I don't understand how people get so mad over symbols. Anything that's just a symbol, like it's it's one thing if you disrespect what the actual symbol is for. Yeah. Even we'll take we'll break it down to marriage. Everybody has wedding rings. The wedding ring at the end of the day is a symbol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you lose your wedding ring or you don't wear one, it just people seem to have a fit over it. These monuments that we're tearing down, they're symbols. It's not gonna change history. We can never change history. We can't go back in time and change history. It's a fucking symbol. The American yeah. flag is a symbol. Nobody's saying fuck the troops. Like we know what the troops are over there fighting for, supposedly. Yeah, and then on top of that, flags change. Like, you know how many different countries change their flag every year? Like, you know how often flags are updated? Like, if we actually make Puerto Rico a state, like, we're going to have to, We obviously, the 50 stars ain't going to fly no more. We're going to have to fucking, we're going to have to find a way to make a 51st star, or we're going to have to, we're going to have to change the shit. So, all that shit is just stupid. Let's just say, hypothetically, we are disrespecting the flag. You know what I'm saying? Um, that do you? Do they expect us to be patriotic? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, not no offense. I know people who celebrate the Fourth of July. You know what I'm saying? They they have barbecues and shit, but I don't celebrate that shit for what? That wasn't our Independence Day. Right. You know what I'm nah. saying? We weren't independent. <laughs> we weren't independent with that shit. What else? Nah, yeah, you want me to be patriotic? Hell nah. For what? 
I know not that I'm saying fuck America, fuck that flag, but I'm not gonna have no respect for that flag. That flag wasn't created when I had rights or when my people had rights, so fuck that. We still don't have rights. Exactly. So if why, why would I kick? So so you want me to be on some patriotic shit for a country that doesn't give a fuck about it? You know what I'm saying? It's no, no we, different from the people that went over and fought in World War II in Vietnam and then came back and were still being called niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, yeah, dog. Our soldiers, fucking black celebrities, they were still having to pick their food up behind dumpsters and shit. And like there I said go. last week, I still don't understand why we was. <laughs> what the fuck you got going on, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was loud as shit. Okay, <laughs> and like I said, I still don't understand why we was damn begging to eat at their restaurants and white people don't even season their goddamn food. So, this, this shit just. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> That's a whole other discussion, you know. The whole stuff about the white people. folks too, man. Not them. I know they won't season the shit back in the sixties. <laughs> I know they won't season any <laughs> shit back there. Hell nah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Yeah, that the whole you know uh, wanting us to be patriots or wanting us to be patriotic is just you know, like even when I see people that's on that shit, it really um. It really just surprises me. Like, uh, and I'm just gonna segue into the next point, which is uh, people like Candace Owens, you know what I'm saying? And uh, these other coon ass niggas that be on some like, yeah, I love America, stars and stripes, all that bullshit. And it's like, uh, how? Like, how, how do you justify that shit? Now, I know these people are trolls. I know Candace Owens a troll. I know that dude Brandon Tatum's a troll, you know, but there are some other people like in real life who aren't celebrities who actually support that. They're black people who support. Um, Donald Trump, who support all that patriotic horse shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, how do you justify that shit? And you see what's going on. How do you justify that when you oh, see dude. what happened to John Crawford? How do you justify that? Syndrome. It, it could. Like it's a way of survival. Like, I got to make sense out of why this is happening to me and other people around me who look like me. So maybe if I can appease this person or believe that if I'm respectable enough, or if I'm, you know, mm -hmm. if I vote Republican, or if I straighten my hair and I have these ideals, it might protect me or my kids or my family from having sure. to deal yeah, with. Yeah, but that's, that's bullshit, because they'll still string you up. They'll still hit you with the fire hose. They'll still sick the dogs on you. Don't give a fuck about that of that shit. Absolutely. You still, at the end of the day, you still a nigga. What Jay-Z said that in the song, uh, Story still of OJ. Nigga. Still yeah. a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Whole nigga, rich nigga, faux nigga. You know what I'm saying? You still a nigga. I don't give a fuck yep. what you do. Even you if you're in a binge, you still a nigga in the coop. Yeah, you could do right. all that shit. You could do all that. I'm okay, not black on OJ shit if you want to. That shit ain't. You still gonna be a nigga at the end of the day. So just remember where you at. I don't hate America. I don't hate white people. But I know that I'm in a system of systemic white supremacy. I know what it is at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, until we really get some tangible shit to change that. I'm gonna always be on some nah, nigga. I'm not. I'm not representing that. I don't give a fuck about the anthem, the flag, none of that shit. Maybe. Cause y'all ain't for me. Yeah, cause y'all ain't atone for none of the shit y'all like. The, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't. They paid off the um, the the the, the Japanese Americans when they, when they had those internment camps and shit like that. They gave the Native Americans. You know what I'm saying? They they little parcels of land and they little you know what I'm saying money they give them. Black people, oh y'all get over that. Slavery was a long time ago. Fuck you. you. <laughs> Come on, man. We're still talking about that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm. I started saying I'm gonna go around and start pissing them off and be like, man, 9/11 was like 20 years ago, man. You still worried about that? Uh, yeah, still you still worried about that? Yeah, I'm gonna. Y'all still mad off. about Pearl Harbor? I, saw, I can't yeah, believe. I saw something for the Fourth of July where they were like, "Can everybody black just please put up? Don't all countries matter? Why are we celebrating the?" <laughs> All countries matter. That's exactly what folks on Fourth of July. They're gonna be mad. They're gonna be mad as shit. What about Ireland? <laughs> be mad as shit too. That's a good idea. I'm gonna post that shit too. Definitely gonna post that shit. Yeah. All countries matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coming Fourth of July too. Trust me. You see how that shit feels, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is funny. fucking funny. I seen when that comedian said uh, he made a post. He said. Uh, Somebody, you know, how they saw us forget about slavery, all that, blah, blah, blah. Said, but whenever they post 9 11, they'll be like, never forget. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and everybody got pride with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, super mm -hmm. pride. You know what I mean? Yeah, still tripping about 9 11. So tragic. 
like nigga. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, yeah. like, uh, so I said, that's how I feel. Water, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Like, and, I, and I'm not taking, I'm not taking nothing away from 9 11. It definitely right. was a tragedy, yeah. but at the same time, how can you talk about this shit but overlook our pain? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was one moment in time, too, and it's like the effects right. of slavery are still like it's 2020. It's still and we're still with dealing with it. It's a daily, mm -hmm. it's a perpetual thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slavery yeah, lasted yeah. how long? How long did slavery last? And you're talking about one day versus, you know what I'm saying? Days, even centuries. Come on, man. That's what I'm post on 9 11. Niggas die every day, B. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that nigga savage. They're going to they ban the shit out of you, too. They're going to ban your profile, too. Yeah, they're going to ban the shit out of your profile. You better post that shit from a burner account or it's over. Do that shit right on Twitter too. Yeah, you know how I go. <laughs> but yeah. So final topic. I guess we can get off politics and get to some uh some 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 BS. Some some funny. I thought it was funny. But so everybody was mad at this whole uh I watched the whole B Simone interview and <laughs> I kind of <laughs> Y'all niggas is like. <laughs> nah, go ahead, let it rip, bro. Go I kind of, okay, so I kind of get where she was trying to come from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but her delivery was just terrible, as with damn near everything that she does when she speaks. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to, I want to actually take her personal fucking views out of it and just talk about that itself. So I don't want to be a fucking be some okay. I want to talk about actually like can an entrepreneur date a person with a nine to five successfully. So I don't care what be some oh, yeah. that's her vagina, that's her money, that's her bank account, that's that's her. So I, I mean, can't honestly, tell her how bro, to date, but it's all about the makeup of people, man. Yeah. You know what I'm Very saying? Awesome. Like hey, right. it's all about who you match with. The question you know is, are you gonna be around in the same circles with to run into those people? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right, 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 right. I work a nine to five. I make a decent amount of money, but I'm also not running. What well, do? But I'm not in circles every day with millionaires. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not that's not my typical people that I'm around. I so mean, the not, chances of me dating a woman who is a millionaire is a lot slim, just because I'm not in those circles. Yeah. I can dig it. Yeah, well, she did. I mean, I said we're not gonna talk about her, but I'm gonna reference a few of her points, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, just for just for context. But no, so she did say that it wasn't the money aspect. I guess she said it because they wouldn't understand her lifestyle. Her lifestyle, yeah. And, um, you know, for the fact that she was like, yo, if, if she want to just get up and go check on a warehouse in China or some shit, she was like, most nine to fivers wouldn't be able to go. But I feel like shit, most, if you dating another entrepreneur, like all entrepreneurs ain't mobile. Like some people mm -hmm. got to run their companies right there. Like it's, they can't just get up and go whenever you want to go too. So I mean, it's. Um, I mean, let me ask you this: Was this a was this an interview question? Did somebody ask her this and then she answered it? Nah. It so uh, apparently, it was just uh, Nick Cannon said he was gonna set her up on a blind date, and she just said uh, he asked her what her criteria would have to be, and she said he can't have a nine to five. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to, you know, understand that. Um, I think that was just poor choice of words or even just saying that shit. Like, why would you even say that? Like, yeah, you, 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 you're gonna, you knew you were gonna get attacked. You know what I'm saying? You knew it was coming. And the Ooh. nine to five is proverbial. Is she didn't literally mean nine to five, but like, because the doctor would tell about to say a nine. Yeah. To, it would be a nine to five. I mean, that's not his actual work hours, but right, right, yeah. Some doctors is millionaires, so. Well, yeah, well, you, can't, like you can't blame her for having a preference. Right, to, I mean, that's her choice. Relationship you know? work, they're going to make it work. I don't that's think it has anything to do with your career type. That's what I said. But right. to mm -hmm. play devil's advocate. Hey, y'all, I got a slide. All right, Kyle. I do agree with her point that as a woman, when she was asked what her preferences were, she got attacked, but a man could say, could if someone had asked him those same preferences and he said that he wanted an entrepreneur or he wanted a woman who looked a certain way or behaved a certain way or had a certain type of hair or a certain type of body type mm -hmm. that that would have been okay his 
preferences would have been respected, but because she's a woman, she got attacked. I, I have to disagree. That. Chris Brown just went through that for a music lyric. He said, I like the, the, the something bras with the pretty hair. What did, what did he say? About a lighter version of that. Oh, yeah. This was hair. a couple months ago, yeah, with the good hair. Yeah, he wanted then, girls and, with good hair. But, I mean, like I feel about anybody, like that's like when people say, that people without kids say, I want somebody that don't got no kids. Like, that's that's just what works for your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's how I feel. Like, you know, I don't feel like it's a not versus me. That's just, she's saying whatever she's saying based off her life. Yeah, her preference. How like she got it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? How she got to handle her life. So, you know, that's how I look at it. Like, you no, know what I mean? Like, like we've talked about before. Like, I already know. Like, I pay attention to what's going on. Like, I know me, my complexion and all that shit. Like, I know I'm not a lot of women preferences because a lot of women don't prefer a nigga that's my complexion. A lot of, a lot of women, especially now, like, like darker men. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I accept that, though. I don't get in my feelings like, oh, it, it ain't that deep. Like, find somebody that fucking like you. Cause for, mm -hmm. for somebody that for everybody that don't, there's somebody that do. And then, bro, and then people like, don't know what they like sometimes, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I've had they that too. Like they think they don't like something until you know you experience it, and somebody might change. Yeah. You know I've what I'm had saying? that because I've I've had situations where I've been with somebody and they was like, "Yo, I I don't even date like seeing niggas." But right, you're different. exactly. Right, right. Like, yeah, right. uh, I don't know what the fuck that mean, but okay. Well, I think um, <laughs> the touch touching back on what. <laughs> That's a a good that's a really ignorant that's ignorant. why i say I, you know what i mean uh, that's like telling the woman oh you're cute for a black like girl career or you cute for a big girl is rooted in somebody else's oppression be it yeah. light skin uh, dark skin um uh, a certain grade of hair versus a kinkier grade of hair if it's yeah. rooted in stuff like that that's just ignorance that's not yeah. to me um yeah that's that's what i would silly or I need somebody who is Christian because I'm Christian. Yeah. That's just something that's that's a bit yeah, that's what I was touching on back on what Doc said, which Chris Brown caught that criticism because of the racial undertones of saying I want somebody with good hair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why he caught that criticism. Yeah. But yeah. see but 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 my, my thing is like But he never explained what but his exactly, like, of uh, what good exactly, hair is exactly my thing is like exactly <laughs> y'all you, you could take that in a negative tone or you could take it in a tone or where he said good hair. That means you keep your hair looking nice. Yeah. You know but what I'm saying? Not what like he said. But when, you know, but he said good hair. So my thing was like, yo, just like she said nine to five, there is explain. And, that, and that's that's I mean the initial reaction from when he just said good hair. Or she just said nine to five. Like people just take it and run with it and never. And it ain't that deep, like to mm -hmm. be me, to be real. That's how I feel. Like it ain't that deep. Like, huh? if somebody I mean, like that can make you, you know, mad or feel a way about how you living, and you probably not even gonna meet this person. Yeah, See, this I mean, person, to be they're honest, not gonna have no we, quality. We all got preferences. But it's it's his platform, though. I think that was the issue. You have a platform. Yeah, because we but like he said, we so can't he sit here and act like and say, no. We get it. Though. I, I get what she's saying. Girls. Yeah, I get it yeah. too. But I'm Cause, saying like, because we can't act like niggas don't follow these person. celebrities like they motherfucking messiahs and shit. Like, that's true. But he's has said before his prefaces about dark skinned women. He says, big, you know, he said something about all women before. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It ain't just the first time he just said anything about women, and he just like, nah. But see, that's what he's attaching on to. You know what I mean? At that time, like, and they see him with these Asian women. You know what I'm saying? We're like, well, you know what I'm saying? Blah, 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 blah. But in my sense, I'm like, yo, people be trying to turn people into, into everything so quick, man. Yeah. Uh, it ain't that deep, bro. It really ain't, man. Like, but no, nah, that's the thing. Though. I mean, age, everybody's man. not going to be everybody's preference. But see, we got five minutes left. So back on topic, though, I feel like... um. I feel like a, a entrepreneur can date whoever the fuck they want to do. It doesn't have to be another entrepreneur. It's just about who's going to give you the time that you require, whether it's a lot or a little bit, because everybody don't require spending the same amount of time. So it's going to, it's all about who's going to make you feel how you want to feel, who you compatible with. Chemistry is everything. So you can, you can date a 
50 other entrepreneurs and y'all have no chemistry. Ain't nothing there. And you can, you can find a nine to five. You just have to reassess your values and what, is this really a standard or is this something that I'm throwing out there, you know, without any real basis for how it's going to like benefit my life in some way. You you have to be a bit more mature about your standards. The older you get when you're dating. Fact. Yeah, I mean, because now everybody dates for the gram. Everybody dates for show. They date to take pictures. They date so we could take these selfies together and we could be on vacation together and show everybody how good we look together as a unit and be relationship goals and all that shit. So it's a bunch <laughs> of superficial <laughs> shit. Like, it's, yeah. there's, no, there's no foundations to these relationships no more. And I'm not saying no relationship has foundations, yeah, but, but, yeah, but the majority, majority of them of don't have foundations. It's just like, oh, she looks good. She think I look good. We look good together. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. we we gonna be relationship goals. I'm gonna goddamn. I'm gonna send some flowers to her job so she can put them on Instagram and we be relationship goals and shit. Mm. But yeah. Anyway, man. Two minute warning. Um. <laughs> so Kim, this is your first time up here. So when we leave, we uh we take like 30, 30 45 seconds to say something to close the show out. So okay. Put you in the hot seat first. Oh no, you go first because I'm. <laughs> I didn't even that nah, we press for time, so go ahead, Kel. I don't know what to say. F- final <laughs> thoughts, Kel. Thank you for Kel. having me. <laughs> for sure. Go ahead, Kel. Um, be wary of agents, man. You know what I'm saying? There's agents and allies. I think I said this last week. But I'm gonna say it again. There's, a- there's allies and there's agents. People that pretend to be your ally and uh, pretend to be your friend. And they're not, they not really on that. They're really working against you. You know what I'm saying? Just be wary of the people around you. And even though the people, they might have the same skin tone as you, be wary of what their um, intentions and goals are and what they're mm-hmm. putting out in the world. And, you know, a lot of times you, you might associate with somebody and you're guilty by association by fucking with this person. Mm-hmm. And they, they don't really have your best interest in mind. Right. So, uh, Doc? I don't think he heard you for real. Doc? Yeah. yeah, we can now. Yeah, I wish I would have caught more of the episode, but through the calls. But uh, For sure. I just felt like we need to keep conversation going, and like we can't let that shit die. You know what yeah, I'm don't because don't look. We got to stick together and be more formative and have these conversations within you know our community with one amongst each other. You know what I'm saying? That's a but fact. Yeah, that's about it. Keep our keep our foot on their necks. Don't let up. Cause that's yeah. what we do every time. Every time we start something, start happening, we we always let up. Uh, we got less than a minute left. Uh, shit, my words is buy back the block. True. Take all this all shit right. back. Buy back True. the block. Buy black. Mm-hmm. Buy black. Support buy black, black business. Buy black. Support black business. I don't care how cliche this shit sounds and how fucking many times it's been regurgitated. I'm gonna keep saying the shit. Buy right. support black business. Buy black. Right. So. Till next time. I definitely bye enjoyed bye. y'all. And All right. So. Peace. Yo. Peace. Peace.